my fellow student level family to the Alpha Blues News Podcast. My name is Craig Train, Fitting for the Beatles from Swampy Mendo, South Florida. And today's date is Wednesday, May 8th, 2019. So let us begin. Oh, good day, folks. Thank you for tuning in. A little bit mellow today, so I'm just going to make it short and sweet. Do a couple of things. Mainly in, in the state of Florida. And I am at Downtown Our Saloon, located at 10 South New River Drive East. I think that's what it is. Yeah, let me say it. Yes, 10 South New River Drive East in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. Downtown area, New River, historical landmark, etc. You should come here and check it out. Cool little facility, great little history behind it. And um, awesome landmark. Become first time I came here was in '96, and I gotta say I, I like it. Every time I come here, it's always been courteous, a good vibe. So um, support your mom and pop facilities, right? Absolutely. Well, I'm gonna just I'm um, not gonna go. Sam, I'm not gonna go too much here. I'm going to go with a couple articles pertaining to the Sun Sentinel. And this one came out last night. Well, yeah, late, late afternoon. This read is very cool. It says, any semitism bill goes where a law shouldn't. It's an editorial. And it says here, although Governor DeSantis might hesitate to veto any bill that the House and Senate passed unanimously, the two, two Jewish Floridians who asked him to reject anti-Semitism legislation, HB 741, gave him good reasons why he should. So remember, 32 Jewish Floridians asked him to reject it. Just to make that clear. It goes too far, as they pointed out. Some of his provisions confuse anti-Semitism with the criticism of Israel. It has profound constitutional problems as the bill is plainly meant to be enforced throughout Florida's public schools, colleges, and universities. The staff report on HB 741 remarked on the constitutional issue, noting that the U.S. Supreme, Nazi Supreme Court has emphasized that the First Amendment right to free speech includes the right to make hate speech. Much commentary of criticism is indeed animated by anti-Semitism from the left as well as the right, and it is reprehensible. And anti-Semitism in all its ugly aspects is on the rise. According to the FBI, hate crimes against Jewish people and institutions increased by 37% from 2016 to 2017, followed by lethal mass shootings six months apart in the synagogues in Pittsburgh and San Diego. I did one about the trio by synagogue in Pittsburgh and how the rabbi or the congregation contradict natural Jewish law, Jewish natural law. You can look that up on my archives, all right? In Florida, Jewish centers have had bomb threats and Jewish sites have been vandalized with painted swastikas. Some of the public posts on an, out, on an outline online article on the HB 741 controversy were the vilest anti-Semitism imaginable. But HB 741 is about more than that. It makes the state of Florida a party to an intense debate among American Jews over policies of the Israeli government that, to some, violate ethical principles of their faith and foreclose the possibility of a fair and peaceful permanent resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian dispute. J Street, a pro-peace Jewish lobby in the U.S., criticized the bill as seemingly intent to crack down on campus critics of Israel, rather than the xenophobic white nationalists and far right. At the time when we should be welcoming the value, valuing open debate on the issues of social concern, said the Florida Floridians letter to DeSantis. HB 741 is a heavy-handed attempt to silence public criticism of the Israeli government human rights violations, degree or disagree with the critics. The Florida legislature has no business intruding on those discussions. 
Additionally, the accusation that such criticism is an anti-Semitic does a disservice to the real issues of anti-Semitism that should concern of us today, all of us today, excuse me. The letter of objection also to citing only anti-Semitism as an example of religious discrimination, and it accused Bill, Bill sponsor Representative Randy Fine, Republican from Brevard, of attending to punish critics of the Israeli government. Fine, who has been firebrand on the issue, validated the critics' opinion of him and his response to Florida politics. He dismissed them as 32 Jews out of 700,000 in Florida who don't want to ensure their own children and grandchildren be protected in school. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a big guarantee on that, huh? The 32 singers include two well-known South Florida constitutional lawyers, Alan Levine and Benjamin Waxman, and two rabbis. Legislation amends Florida's Educational Equality Act, which requires equal access and prevents discrimination against students and employees in Florida's K-20 public education programs. It adds religion to the existing prohibitions against discrimination on grounds of race, ethnicity, national origin, gender, dis disability, and marital status. So far, so good. That will protect people of all faiths, including Islam. But then it deals explicitly with only with defining anti-Semitism, the exclusion of other bigotries, such as anti-Islamic prejudice, occasion a bitter debate in the House. The bill requires educational institutions to threat anti-Semitism in an identical matter, manner to discrimination motivated by race. A student accused of anti-Semitism could be disciplined or expelled. A teaching professor could be fired entirely on the basis of constitutionally dubious language. Among other things, HB 741 cites these supposed examples of anti-Semitism, accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nation. Drawing comparisons to contem contemporary Israeli policy to that of Nazis. It's interesting because there is, I read the bill on my past episode pertaining to HB 741, and um, you can check that out too. Read it in its entirety, and there's a link for that. You can read it yourself. Applying double st double standard to Israel by requiring behavior of Israel that is not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation or focusing peace or human rights investigations only on Israel. Delegitimizing Israel by denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination and denying Israel the right to exist. In attempts to qualify those metrics by saying that criticism of Israel some of the criticism of other countries isn't anti-Semitic. And to say that no, none of the language shall be construed to diminish or infringe upon any First Amendment right. But that still leaves too much to someone's judgment. It is not the government's business to control what people might say about any issue, let alone one consequential and emotional as long as a long search for an exclusive peace in the land sacred to three religions. The dubious definition comes largely from a document adopted in 2005 by the European Monetary Center on Racism and Xenophobia and later by the United States Depart Department of the State. The lead author was Ken Ken Kenneth S. Stern, former director, director on anti-Semitism for, for the American Jewish Community Committee. But, but Stern opposes their use in educational settings because they are only meant as guidelines for research and diplomacy. The staff report made the legislator aware of that. In December 2016, New York Times op-ed Stern wrote that congressional attempts to write them into U.S. law were aimed directly at the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel, which has traction on many college campuses. At best, he says, students and faculty members will be scared into silence and administrators will err on the side of suppressing or censoring free speech. Rather than suppressing speech about the conflict, he concluded, we should be encouraging it. How else will students learn? He's right. 
and uh, it was written, you know, by one of his members or designee, you know, and um, editorial page wrote was Mary O'Hara, Sergio Busto, Steve Bisquis, editor in chief Julie Anderson. That's the board. But yeah, Mr. Stern's right. How are they going to learn if you're going to suppress? Well, one of the so I did wrote a, wrote a letter about that to book to all my servants. Senate uh, Senator Farmer Jr. and Chip La, House Representative Chip Lamarca, because it was voted unanimously in the House. Only nine, not only six people didn't vote on it, but Chip Lamarca did vote on it. So I sent this composition, my correspondence to them, him and uh, him and Farmer, and it says here, "Greetings, fellow servants, representing the great state of Florida." Voting aye on HB 741, anti-Semitism bill, was extremely disappointing due to its abridgment on Article 1, Sections 2, which is basic rights, 4, which is free speech, and 10, which is prohibited laws of our state constitution. Plus, it vilifies your oath of office under Article 2, Section 5 of the same document. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of Semite, Semite means a number Member as means a member of any number of peoples of ancient southwestern Asia, including Akkadians, Phoenicians, Hebrews, and Arabs. Nothing about Israel, okay? That's what you folks know. Labeling individuals or a group or groups, I put that in the I put the S in there in parentheses, for criticizing tyrannical practices by the Israeli government, any Semitic is baseless and repugnant. Moreover, this referendum declares a prohibited law according to Article 1, Section 10 of the Florida Constitution. So it means this bill, if it gets to the law, is null and void. Plain and simple. No exceptions. But I will continue on here. We, are, we the people of Florida, have a natural born or God-given right to excoriate anyone, including government, whether foreign or domestic, as long as it isn't egregious physically threat or injure. So who do you serve? Your constituents or the nation of Israel? The truth of the matter is John J. forewarned us on Federalist Papers numbers 2 through 5 and George Washington's farewell address that occurred on September 19, 1796. I boldly recommend examining those scripts as soon as practicable. The fundamental principle of our Declaration of Rights intends to supersede HB 741. No exceptions. I bravely suggest you reconsider this item by recanting your support on this anti-Semitism bill. Thanks and hope to hear from you soon. Fraternally, Craig L. Tote. And I think it's very similar to same, a similar one with uh, Governor DeSantis. And I just did it with the same thing with Finesse and let them know that the full legislation chose poorly. Everything's all the same. And I uh, recommend that he uh, veto it. Veto, veto this prom um, item promptly. So I haven't heard anything yet, but uh, mess up my intake on it. And the truth of the matter is, folks, free speech is more important than your feelings. And Frederick Douglass made that statement to suppress, to suppress free speech is a double wrong. Not just to the hearer, but to the speaker as well. I could be, I probably may flip that over. And of course, Ben Franklin was very fantastic on freedom of speech as well. I don't have it on top on me right now, but I do apologize for it. Yeah, freedom of speech protects the minority over the majority. Now we'll use the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which is great. But you got to use your state constitution. Free speech is a basic right. Natural born. Under Article 1, Section 2. And Section 4, which is free speech in the press. As long as you don't... If you, if you find if you find your accuser liable, they have to prove it in court. So the whole thing is, my friends, this anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism bill is invalid, null and void. Shred it into oblivion.
and to other bills as well. Like the anti-BDS law that was passed during Rick, Rick Scott as governor. That's a prohibited law too. And to give you guys an example, that's why I always recommend people might in the state of Florida to read the Florida Constitution, especially your Declaration of Rights. No compromises. If they don't like it, ship their rear end out of here. Do some deportation on these jerk-offs or these clowns. And sometimes I try to use vulgarity, but um, pretty mild, I would say. I'm not going to go too uh, egregious. But that's how you got to look at it. And I did send to, I did uh, send to them on a, on a Twitter page as well. On my elected servants. An email. So, it's okay if you want to paste and copy. Um, see what happens. I may just... Um, you know, I may, you know just, just write your own thing and um, take it from there. But the truth of the matter is, folks, that is prima facie just cause on its face. HB 741 is discredited. Period. Alright, I'm going to do one more here. It's interesting. It's in reference to uh, Scott Israel. It says here, Governor Ron DeSantis unmoved by criticism from suspending Sheriff Scott Israel. As it reads here, and who wrote this? Anthony Mayan came out today. It says here, Governor Ron DeSantis on Wednesday rejected suspended Broward Sheriff Scott Israel's contention from that governor removed him from office because of politics. Just three days after taking office in January, DeSantis suspended Israel citing neglect of duty and incompetence related to the January 6, 2017 shooting at Fort Lauderdale Highwood International Airport in which five people were killed and February 14, 2018 Mar Marjorie Stoneman Douglas massacres, high school massacre which killed 17 people. In a legal response filed late Friday with the Florida Senate, which upholds or overturns gubernatorial suspensions, Israel's attorney said the Senate suspended the sheriff because as a candidate for government, he wanted to score points with the families of people killed in the Parkland massacre. The Senate speaking just before he delivered a speech to the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance, Broward's Business Development Group, said that's not true. Parkland families are people that I have listed, listened to, to on different things. Doesn't mean I agree with them on everything. But I think that in instance, obviously, they were major failures of government. He said Israel will be able to make his argument to the Florida Senate and see if they buy them, then vote for him. DeSantis wanted the matter resolved by the end of the, an annual legislative session, which adjourned on Saturday. But Israel fought the suspension in court. He lost, but the Senate delayed consideration of the case until all court proceedings were done. A final hearing before the Senate special master is scheduled for June. I want this done by now, DeSantis said. I think the fact that they have the special master scheduled for June leads me to think probably sometime in September they can deal with it. Can't blame, I can't blame him for it. If you read the, exec, um, the executive order he did, 19-14, it was meritable. And he's talking to an individual that I didn't even vote for the Senate. I didn't, that was critical to uh, some of his um, decision-making as a congressman. However, he was a JAG officer, so he was an attorney. He must get all the information, examine everything before making this decision. It wasn't politics. It was principle. Plain and simple. See, Scott Israel's biggest mistake was politicizing. So I've learned what happened at the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport. It happened again. At Storm and Douglas. But you want to blame gun owners and the National Rifle Association for what happened. Which hunting doesn't pay, Sheriff Israel? Not at all. 
And there's even even articles I read that some people in the Democrat, those Democrats in Broward County don't want you either. Like I said before, if you're gonna run, you'd be the Nick Navarro for the Democratic Party. You will lose the primaries. You, your credibility is shocked. Stop complaining. Stop using the political blame game. Witch hunting doesn't pay, sir. And the truth does hurt. You'd be, you'd probably, you'd probably be some bellboy for Homeland Security for all I care. I don't want you in, in here representing my county. That's a big mistake you made. Try to shake your tyrannical attributes and blame everyone else for your incompetence of being the overseer. You're not the only one to be blamed on this. But you were the captain of the ship. You didn't learn from the past. You just want to throw the hot potato or hot grease and salt on someone else's lap. So you know what? Do your thing with the Senate. It should have been done maybe long before. Should have been should have let that go first. But no, you want to do, do you believe in judicial supremacy, right? It blew back in your face, and I wasn't surprised at all. I read that order and comprehended pretty damn well. You better think about that before running your mouth. On, and politicizing. It will, that was meek and unmerable of you, sir. It's not out of malice, but principle. That's all I gotta say. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us through your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you said something that's interesting, I want to check out whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the decorum. Plus, I will leave the footnotes and. Um, my contacts for my website, for my social media sites and email addresses within the speaker page, okay? Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can live with humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.